bit of a rough and tumble game, it seemed like, but anything more serious come through than just bumps and bruises? Uh, you know, mainly bumps and bruises. We got to see about Eric Freeberg a little bit because uh, he took a little bit of a knock to the head, so we'll have a better determination uh, tomorrow. But uh, uh, outside of that, you know, just little bumps and bruises. Evans and Dempsey should both be ready to go. Yeah, yeah. And now, you know, beyond health, I mean, in a total sense, how ready are you guys to actually start the season? Well, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, it's our second game, you know, inside of four days, so that makes it a little bit tougher. I thought the guys put in a, a strong effort uh, down there at, uh, at Azteca against a good team. Uh, uh, you know, obviously we were disappointed in the result, and, uh, you know, the travel is uh, also extensive. It's a long travel day, but uh, we'll, we'll recover. We'll be ready to play. Do you have one thing that sticks out in your mind that makes you feel optimistic about the season that's starting? Uh, I think we have a talented team, and I think we have good players. I think we have a good mix of uh, young and old. Obviously, uh, the young guys need to step up at the right moments when they get moments to step onto the field, and uh, that's something they'll continue to grow into. Uh, but I also believe very much in our veteran players and uh, you know the, the workload and the effort that they bring in on a game-to-game -game basis. Brad sort of characterized the, the defense as maybe not necessarily bad team defense as much as it was just a series of individual letdowns. How do you sort of characterize uh, what sort of happened on the back line there? Well, it's breakdowns a little bit. You know, obviously uh, we let a player who's very dangerous, you know, in, in San Buesa get, uh, get open, uh, and he was able to orchestrate the game. You know, he had three assists, you know, for them on, the, on their goals, or actually four assists, I think, on their, on their goals. Uh, so, you know, being aware of him, you know, we need to do a little bit better job of, you know, then it's maybe a missed assignment here, a missed assignment there. Uh, but that's what preseason is for, you know, that's where you're trying to get through and learn. And obviously for us, we're in a real competition. We're in a real competition earlier than the other teams are. And if you get it got a couple more preseason games under your belt, you know, how many minutes did Chad and uh, Brad have together in preseason? How many minutes did the whole back four have together in, mid uh, in preseason? Uh, not all that much. So it's a matter of uh, just continuing to grow in their cohesion with, his, with each other. What do you think of your, your competition in, in the West going into the season? Well, the West is a strong conference, you know. I mean, you know, it was a good conference last year. It was tight. Um, you know, I think from top to bottom, it's stronger than the East. Uh, but and on, you've got teams that uh, continue trying to grow and improve themselves. Galaxy's added a lot of players. Portland's made some changes. Uh, Vancouver's added some players. I mean, everybody's made changes and, and added players, and, and so have we. So, uh, you know, some of our additions came in midseason last year. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's definitely, uh, definitely going to be a dogfight. I don't think anybody's going to run away. Your thoughts on the KC squad that's coming Sunday? Obviously, they're they're going to be rested. <laughs> they didn't play on Wednesday, but they're uh, they're a good team. You know that was disappointed uh, in their early exit last year. You know they were maybe three inches away from uh, from being able to advance uh, into into the next series uh, in that knockout game. But they've uh, they're another team that's got a uh, a pretty consistent uh, nucleus down the middle of the field. You know that they've kept together for a while now. And Dwyer and Fellhaber and you know and uh, you know Espinosa's in there. And they got Beesler. You know, so there's a lot of guys that uh, have known each other for a good bit of time now. What do you think is sort of a, a reasonable? I don't know. What do, what do you kind of think uh, Jordan Morris can accomplish as a successful rookie season? Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to set goals in terms of how many goals should he score, or how many goals should he be involved with. You know, it's a constant uh, situation of growing and adapting. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, coming out of the college environment, being able to uh, train day in and day out and go through a grind uh, is, is one of the more difficult adjustments that they have to make. And even though he's been at college and with the national team, the national team is small snippets of time. It's like a week here. It's maybe 10 days here. It's maybe four days here and there. But now able to sustain it over a period of time becomes a little more difficult. But uh, he's a player who works hard. He's a quality player. He was a little bit under under the weather down in uh, down in Mexico. Had a little bit of a of a cold of a cold, and that's why we took him out earlier. But uh, he's a player to make his way. Singing. Uh, do you think his development 
in general is helped or hurt by the over move, which presumably moves him into a starting spot that he might not have uh, You know, playing time always helps you, you know, when you're getting on the field and getting minutes. But, you know, part of it is we're still trying to learn uh, everybody's strengths and weaknesses and how we played. And there were times where, you know, Clint's going to drop underneath and find the ball a little bit. And at those moments, you know, uh, uh, you know, Jordan has to become that second striker for us. And, and there was times where he was still hanging wide, but that's more just learning how to play coming from that position. And there were a couple of good runs that he made, you know, the one where he drew the free kick and, you know, where he made the diagonal run across and Joven found him in behind. Uh, but that's just going to take time to understand when and where to make those runs. Siggy, you guys are chasing that first MLS Cup, and I, and I know it hurts if you guys get knocked out regardless of who ends up winning it, but does it sting anymore that Portland has one now? Uh, you know, it always stings, but, uh, you know, I mean, congratulations to them, you know, on winning it. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, the difference between winning and losing are very small, you know, and, uh, you know, you need to then to bounce your way. But what we've always wanted to be is a very consistent franchise from day one. I think we've been that, uh, but we want to get that ultimate prize. Sure. I'm just wondering, because Christian was just here a second ago saying, hey, we don't like them. You know the fans don't like Portland either. So I'm just wondering, you know, sometimes when your enemy gets something that you want. Well, we're going to, you know, I'm sure we're going to hear about it. You know, we heard about it a little bit in the preseason game. We'll hear about it when we go down there and play. And I'm sure they've got 18,000 chants uh, about how they can uh, how they can chant about it and so forth. But at the end of the day, it's a new season, and we'll see what comes at the end of this year. How far has Stephen Fry come over the last couple of years? And how valuable is it? Stefan's done well. I mean, he's been a very, very consistent keeper. Uh, you know, we knew that once he got some games under his belt when we brought him here from, from Toronto, I felt capable of, of what he could do in terms of making saves and, and uh, you know, his abilities and goals. So he's uh, done nothing to disappoint uh, me or the team or the club in that manner, and he continues to grow.